Hi, this is Carrie Hummingford, and this is Soul Nectar, that show that attempts to talk about the essence place, the connection to that which is deeper and bigger and wider than our current human existence and how we can connect in with that. And, and we learn about that through sharing stories because we all lo uh, love gathering around the campfire and hearing stories about each other's journeys. And today, I'm so excited to have Shaman Durek with us. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm honored and I am blessed and I'm thankful for manifesting this as well with you. Wonderful. So, you know, I found Shaman Durek searching on the web, like something, of course, synchronicity connected me to him um, through my navigation on the web. I don't even remember how it happened. And so here's a little bit about him. He is a spiritual guide and gifted healer. He acts as a mediator or bridge between the spiritual and physical planes and applies ancient spiritual wisdom coupled with decades of devoted study and practice to help bring success, happiness, and healing into people's lives. And he's actually a third generation shaman. So this is a beautiful thing, um, that, a gift that you bring to the world. And I would love for you to tell us just a little bit more about you for people that aren't familiar with you. Yes. So, um, so my focus in life is to really redefine the technology that we've been put into since the time we were children. Uh, the technology that has us believing that we have to actually do something in order to be loved and acknowledged. And I follow a lot of uh, the teachings of my ancestors. Um, my ancestors um, come from Africa. I'm a third generation shaman from my great grandmother. And um, one of the things that I learned a lot about in, you know, when I was chosen as a shaman, I was chosen at five years old and I started training when I was 11. And my, my training and focus has been towards women and empowering women to recognize that they are the true leaders on earth and to kind of um, get them into a place where they're mobilized together and operating from their highest tools and awareness and their intuition so they can actually open up the gates that we shamans have been waiting for so that they can actually usher in the new intelligence and be able to bring it back to where it's supposed to be where we're operating on a planet that is actually moving from the motivation of our species as a whole and the love that is the motivation for um for life and so you know and once we do that then we can start dismantling bombs and this and and you know and disconnecting from the idea of war disconnecting from the idea that we have to keep doing things in order to be loved to be uh validated by reward and and really start realizing that um we're already validated by creation and the fact that we exist. And so that's basically what I do. And I travel from country to country around the world. I go to the countries that are having very difficulty in tumultuous times, uh, be it with war, or be it with conflict and so forth. I work with women. I work with um, you know, people in um, situations where they're not uh, you know, they don't know what yoga is. They don't know what a chakra is. They don't know what uh, meditation is. I work with the general public that is not connected to that information yet. And what I do is I bring old world shamanism to them and I make it in more of a modern, uh, you know, how do you say modern uh, structure that they can understand how to adapt in their life and make it more of a lifestyle choice of how they actually use their thinking process and actually how they operate from their emotions and their heart. I am totally loving everything you just said. I am <laughs> hugely loving that. Okay. Thank you for doing that work in the world. We need that work done. Okay. Now we're going to get on to a little bit more about your personal journey because we are wanting to explore all the pathways in to finding connection to essence because for many of us we're a little disconnected from it and so maybe tell us a little bit about what essence means to you and then how you found your connection to it um can i just also just remove something that was that you said as yes well? we do that a lot with my friend but you know uh we're not disconnected from essence none of us are disconnected from essence it's just that our awareness is not upon it right thank you yes absolutely we're always in right? But it's the awareness of, right? So um, for me, it started when I was a, um, a little boy. I remember uh, being in my room and I remember touching the wall over and over and over again. And my mother, um, you know, asked me what I'm doing and I started crying and she said, why are you crying? And I said, mommy, it's solid. I can't change it. I can't change it. It's solid. 
And in that moment, I realized that I was in something that um, I knew that something was erased, but something was also not erased. And I had, I, from that moment as a kid, I kept testing and, and, and asking a lot of questions about what kind of place am I in where I can't change uh, the materials around me to fit what I, you know, what I want to experience. And, and I realized that um, in that moment, it, it was a, a, a conflict that I was having. And then I started to, uh, you know, with the shaman side of my family, but I also have another side of the religious side of my family. I remember listening to my grandfather who became a Seventh-day Adventist minister, and he would be talking about God and talking about the Bible. And every time he said something of love, I lit up like, you know, like, like lights. And then when something came in with fear or lack or limitation or any of these things, I heard this message in my heart. It was like, this is the incorrect information. It was like immediately I felt this discordant energy and I was, my focus was to find out why are they lying? Why are they lying to, um, to me? And then it dawned on me more about the essence of, of being in nature. You know, nature for me, and being around people in touch was very important for me as a kid. I've always had this love. And I, I you know, my mom used to always say to me, you know, um, there are times where she would take me um, to the dentist and then she'd lose me. And then I would be hugging a woman and whispering in her ear and she would be crying and be like, who is this, this girl of yours? Because she used to have my hair in braids, you know, and my, my mom would say, no, she's not a girl, it's my son. And just how does she know all these things about me? And she said, my son is, um, is, has been chosen to be a shaman in this lifetime and he's going to help the people and he has these gifts and where, you know, we have to help him with these gifts and stuff. But for me, the core essence came in several parts. One was when I went to Israel, when I was a little bit older, I went to the Wailing Wall and I asked, um, God, who are you? And all of a sudden... I saw a flash of light and I saw the trees, the ants, the animals. I saw blood, I saw molecules, I saw sky, I saw air, I saw all of these things. And it got faster and faster and faster and faster. And literally it was like an explosion of love moving through my entire being. And my friend who was the rabbi who was with me, I was on the floor and I had a nosebleed. And it was in that moment I made a decision that I was never going to see God as separate from myself and creation, I mean, God, creation, however you want to interpret the words because they're irrelevant because the love is so bigger than the word itself. So however we, you know, we use it, I always say, if we say Allah, we say Jesus, we say, you know, whatever it is, you know, some people say the goddess, the God, you know, everyone's got a, a word for it. And for me, it is, it's, 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 the, it's not even the word love because love is a container. It is bigger than that. It is like a vibrational sound. It's like, you know, I was telling uh, my friend, the best way I can give love to you is just to stand in front of you and dance or paint something or just hold you because I can't, the essence for me is that experience. It's that experience of connection and knowing that I'm a part of everything. Wow. Oh, I love that. I'm in love with that. Right? I've always felt that too. Yeah. Especially and in feeling, nature. Oh, yeah. Nature. Well, the thing is interesting for me and, you know, one of the projects that I'm working on right now is I always tell people nature is the true technology. And, um, and I just the other day, I took a bunch of students out into nature and taught them how to connect into the network of trees and find the mother tree and then download the informational wisdom from the trees through honor and, and, and humbleness. And, and they literally, I said, now pull away from the tree and look at what you see. And they're like, oh my God, there's all these dimensions in nature that we don't even see. The, 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 the wind stopped and everything stopped and you can see all the layers of the fairy kingdom, the elf kingdom, you can see all of the different realms, you know, spreading out because the trees have greater technology for us, but we are using technology that was based on how we were taught in school, what the, what the false programs were, the false, I, we call it in shamanism, the incorrect technology. And, and, and the real technology is nature. So yeah, I can imagine, right? So I've been trained in Toltec wisdom through my mentor, Heather Ash, who, who is a student of Don Miguel Ruiz. 
Uh And from that training really helped me because I could start to look at the world as what do I believe the world is showing it to me through my experiences. And that was what helped me to start to realize my filters and my beliefs because I would start to look at my life. And actually I started with my Facebook feed. I started looking at my Facebook feed to see what was showing up on my feed and then realizing that was a reflection of what I believe. Mm. Because what, the reason I bring this up is because I feel that what you're saying is so beautiful. And I've actually been able to touch some of that, like awareness of fairies and awareness of, <laughs> they make me want to laugh. I don't see them with my eyes though. I just, I feel them at this moment, you know, I'm hoping that will open up for me that I'll be able to, you know, I will be able to (laughs) see eventually. But for now, my sight is my feeling, my sight is my sense, my knowing. And none of that could have, I I think all of that got unlocked because of this Toltec training where I started to question what I was seeing and, and started to realize I had choice about it. I didn't have to choose it. I could change myself. And then everything would start to open up and I could start to see things in a totally different way that I wasn't seeing before. So talk a little bit about that, because that was my pathway into realizing that all the fairies and everything's real. It's just that there were some filters that were blocking me from being aware of it. Yes. So what are some ways that you've been able to help people get past those training, those domestication, as they call it in the Toltec, the filters? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one of the thing is the filters are held by a degree of fear of the unknown. Okay. So there are different levels of the degree of the fear of the unknown. So like I was explaining to a friend of mine, if, when astronauts go into outer space and they just see stars and planets in black space, they don't realize that there's all these other planets and all these other beings that are around them that they can't see because their perception is not allowing them to see it. Mm-hmm. Because see, what happens here on Earth is that we are connected and we have our own individual experience and then we're having a, a, you know, a grouping experience, you know, we call it, and the, that, that energy of what people feel, what people think and everything is kind of like the Maya we actually are uh, moving through, right? And as we lift ourselves out of that Maya, we have to go into the idea of humbleness and humility, which is what I teach all my students. And what does that mean? That means that if you say, like one time this uh, Wall Street exec came and, and, and started wanted to learn from me, and he goes, I want to learn from you, I want to change my life, but if you tell me that fairies are real, I'm out of here. I said, well, there's the door, because fairies are real. <laughs> and he's like, no, you, you, you got to be kidding. And I said, uh, you, you say to me this, and I'm telling you there's the door, because fairies are real. Now, you, now you can say what you can say to me is, at this point in my evolution, I haven't shifted my perception or to be able to see and acknowledge them. But you can't just say something's not real just because you don't have the ability to see it. This is why kids have difficulties with adults because children see those things and adults are like, oh, you're making up, honey, just go to bed. You know, and no. You see, we don't have the structure on earth that allows us to realize that different people have different perceptions and those perceptions are opened up based on your level of fear. So when you're a kid, you don't have that fear until you realize your parents are not there as a structural support to actually support that, yeah, there really is a goblin in your closet because goblins are real. And yes, there is. I mean, I even took a group of New York women together, these very high society women were sitting in this room and this little girl has a candy eating problem. I was just eating too much candy. I said, you want to see what's, what's making her eat the candy? And they're like, yeah. I go, little girl, can you tell me what's making you eat the candy? She goes, yes, a goblin. I said, exactly. They're like, what? You know, and, and the thing is, is that because the reason why spirits behind the scenes can do so much, um, that the ones who are in the lower dimensions, because we don't need to get out of this need of pride and this need of like, oh, I have it all figured out. This is how it is. And this is how it is. Instead of realizing the way we get out of that is by being wrong. The first key is... I'm wrong about blah, 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 right? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and I love this. I love this because what, are, what is causing all the problems in America right now? The need to be right. Right. Oh. But here's the other thing. Want to hear something even, want to hear some more? 
in shamanism, we have this period after the 2012, we call it the, the time of darkness. Hmm. The time of darkness lasts for 10 years. And in that cycle of darkness, we have to, we are, I, you know, I made a joke the other night, I was saying to a bunch of friends, I said, we, right now what's happened is that there's been all this trash and, and dirt and all this kind of stuff. And people ask me, so what do you do for a living right now? I said, well, I'm a janitor. And they're like, I tell people that too. <laughs> you know, what are you talking about? <laughs> And I said, I'm a janitor. I'm cleaning, I'm scrubbing, I'm mopping, I'm cleaning windows, I'm doing all this stuff. Do you know how much muck and duck and all this yucky stuff is coming up right now from the bottom of the barrel? So we're scraping the barrel right now. And that's why all of these countries and all these issues are happening because we haven't been, we just, we, we haven't been acknowledging this horrible smell of trash. Everyone's acting like, oh, it's roses. It's wonderful. It's fabulous. Right. And, you know, and my, and, and the thing is, I'm saying, uh, no, there's trash and we have to clean it up. And so everyone's stuff is coming up right now. And this is why shamans are coming stronger on the planet right now is to get people back into the technology of their core or power instead of looking outside. And an interesting thing about what you just said was the fact that we are these powerful beings. And when we go into this place of like uh, disconnecting ourselves because we're reacting to fear, that's what fear wants. You see, because fear and darkness are brothers and sisters of ours that, that lived a tumultuous life. And when they died and they saw the big picture and the light came for them, they could not let go of the density. So they chose to go in the upside down world, which we call the underworld. And so they need our light in order to sustain themselves there. But what happens is all these light workers on the planet and everyone's afraid of darkness. And the whole reason why we came here is to love the darkness and bring them home. So it's like we've come here to embrace the uncomfortable. We've come here to embrace the things that we don't like. We've come here to show that love can translate through us by us taking in the darkness. We transform the darkness by giving love to ourselves and then by acknowledging our truth and realizing who we really are without reservation, without hesitation, we're able to walk into the underworld and say, come home. You know, not get mad at it or turn our backs on it because that's what the world, that's why we have so much problems in the world because nobody wants to love, you know. It's like I was working with this prisoner in um, prison and people are like, I can't believe you're working with him. He's a rapist. I go, okay, I get what you're saying, but hello, what am I on this planet to do? I'm a light worker. A light worker means we shine the light out of the darkness. I have to go into the dark places and give light. It's easy to give light to people who are love and light, love and light, love and light, and give them hugs. Of course, they all want it. But the ones who need it the most are the ones we have to give it to. Yes, yes, and yes, and yes. I love everything you just said. <laughs> <laughs> this is, see, I knew this is perfect. Okay. I want to say, absolutely, I felt that there are some light workers I've noticed who kind of want to go home on the mountaintop right now. Like they really don't want to get engaged in the shadow place. It's it kind of like it's, th it's throwing them out of their happy place. You know, it's throwing them out of connection. And and you know what I say to that is I say, go as far as you can go while holding your light. You know, it is important to hold your light. It is important to hold that container strong within yourself of the light and the love. And if you feel you can exercise a little bit of love muscle, you know, get involved, get involved through the debate, get involved through, because if we can come from, if we're skilled enough, as we're skilled enough, we can come from love. We can open up the conversation in a, in a way that doesn't threaten the ego. If we come like this, we're, the ego is going to just, you know, and it's going to come back. But I feel like if we can bring the love into it and bring compassion through our hearts, we can open that just a little and just start to unweave it so that there is some openings for people to not feel wrong at first because the ego is really, you know, attached to being right. We can love each other through that process when we've got some skills. And, and that helps the people that are sort of wanting that to happen but don't know how to do it. Does that make yeah. sense? And I would love for you to talk about that more. 
Absolutely. So let me just let me just break down some some quick um, information um, about the ego, right? So the ego is I call it I call it the great paperweight. It's your it's your defender. It's your lawyer. It's your it's your confidant. Your ego's job is to clarify whatever you as the creator says is real. So the moment you say uh, men are hard to find, the ego goes, got it. Men are hard to find. I'll make sure that happens. So the ego goes and blocks all the good men for you. Why? Because you are the creator and what you say goes. Now let's say someone comes in and says men are so easy to find, right? Well, guess what? Your ego is going to come out as your lawyer and go, <coughs> excuse me, but that's not true. And you know, here's all the reasons why. And I'm going to give you a list so you can back off. List one, list two, one through this, one through this, one through this, she went through this page, one through this page, one through this, da, 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 da. okay, goodbye, leave your belief, get out of here, because this is what the creator wants to see, you're not going to come in and change what the creator wants to see, you see, so the, the thing is, we have this, this it, the, we haven't um, taken and understood the ego and its core ethics of what it's really doing for you, we keep saying, I hear people say, kill the ego, get rid of the ego, you come to a planet First of all, a lot of people, the reason why they have a hard time is because they think they have to be perfect. This isn't the planet of perfection. This is called the planet of refinement. This is a type two planet. A type two planet in, um, in the outer realms means basically that you, it's a planet that constantly changes and evolves itself and that it's, there's no perfection. It's all about constantly refining, 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 refining. That's why I tell people, don't get mad at yourself. You know, be gentle, pet yourself with love, give yourself some love, right? Because every time you do something, what, how fun, how, it's, it's supposed to be fun to evolve. Not people are like, oh my God, I'm going through all these things. Oh my God, I know what to do. <laughs> and you're like, this is a planet of refinement. Enjoy this refinement, you know? woman today came in and saw me and she was talking, you know, I was helping her with uh, sexual abuse and all these different things that happened to her. And she's like, why did this happen? Why? I said, are you kidding me? You signed up for the coolest class. Are you kidding? Look at what you get to do. So you got to experience what it feels like. You got to experience the feelings that you got. You got to experience how it affected you, what you did with all these things. And now you're graduating because now you can go help other people because now you're refining and understanding what this is. So now when someone comes to you who's gone through the same thing, you're going to be able to help them because you went through the college. You graduated. You graduated from the sexual abuse college. This is fantastic. So she's like, oh, my God. And she started laughing. She goes, okay, I totally forgot I signed up for that class. <laughs> you know, and like, this is the planet of refinement. So that's like the first key is that we have to be easier on ourselves. People take things. I mean, I had a woman in New York who was like calling me up and I said, what's going on, honey? Why don't we go get some um, really nice raw food? She goes, you know, Shaman Durek, um, I'm just not feeling up to it. I'm like, why? She goes, I feel bad. I said, why, honey? She goes, I didn't go chant today at the, the Buddhist temple. I said, what? You didn't go chant today? You mean this is why you're feeling bad? So you're beating up on yourself because you feel like you disconnected. I have people say, oh my God, I haven't been connected. I've been doing my yoga. I haven't been, I haven't been meditating. I feel horrible. What? That defeats the whole entire purpose. We, we got to be gentle, refinement. It's okay. It's okay. You're always connected. The other thing is recognizing, uh, you said a word and my guides wanted me to, 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 to grab that word. You said that, um, you know, we are, um, all, it's, what, what was the word you said? Guides, what did she say? Uh-huh, got it. So you said that this is something that we ourselves are going through, that we're going through these things. People are going to the mountains and they're checking out, or some people are, you know, you're saying you're, 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 you're bringing love, you're, you're, you know, you're holding love and all these things. And the guides want me to share with you that there's no such thing of holding love. There's no such thing as, um, you know, uh, uh, giving uh, love. You are love, right? And so the thing is that it's the embodiment of, right? It's not that you're giving light. You are light. You are light consciousness. And what is light consciousness? It means consciousness loved frequency. It means that whatever it touches that's dark will be consumed into the light and returned back in its original form, which is love, right? So there's this amazing power that we all have. So when someone is in a joyful place, what they don't realize what's happening is that all that joy, there's a universal bank and all there's these beings that are so amazing 
And what they do is they gather all that beautiful energy. That's why I tell people, if you're going to dance, dance for someone who's in the hospital. If you're happy in that moment, know that that energy is being sent to a child who's fighting for cancer in a hospital. Your energy is never wasted. So when you hug someone, hug them with intention, you know, when we hug someone, you know, I always tell people in, 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 in shamanism, it, there's a strong connection about touch because when you hug someone, you are actually generating electromagnetic energy field and the consciousness of the intention of love is now going out to all the trees, all the animals who are, who are ill, people who are um, trying, you know, the kid who's trying to have his first day at school, who's scared, the woman who's having a baby in the hospital, the man who's overcoming things that he went through in his childhood with pain that he went through, all that energy is being sent to them. You know, so we have to hug with intention. And when you hug someone, start wishing, like saying, you know, I hug someone, I say, I want your life and everything to clear and be open. And I want you to have prosperity. I want you to have love. I want you to just say it in your head and you're transmuting that energy to them. So, yeah. Yes. And hugging should last more than 30 seconds. I mean, Thank you. Oh it my takes God. a while. No and it's, no padding. And it's no not padding. this. It's not like high <laughs> side hug. It has to be full frontal. Like, <sighs> yes, I want to feel you. And you know what, Carrie, too? I don't shake, you know, people always say it's that they, I don't, they, I'm known as the shaman who never shakes your hand. I don't touch people's hand. It's the weirdest thing for me. I, it's like your hand and shaking your hand. I don't care who you are. If you don't want to shake my hand, I bow to you. But I am not going to have this handshake. I want, like you, as I do is I lift my arm. I've been teaching my students. So I tell them, don't shake people's hands. Just lift your arm up. And then they're, they're going to put their hand here. You lift their arm and you're going to go in for the hug. Because <laughs> the thing is... <laughs> <laughs> People are you know, and, so uncomfortable with hugging and I, not oh, I, love those I love hugs. I love hugs now that I, and I do them until I melt. You can feel mm -hmm. the melt. Yes. And I feel like the melt is when the hearts are truly resonating together and you're, and I feel like what it does is recalibrate your parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems it back does. into love out of fear. Absolutely. It does. Yes. And, the, and don't pat, you know, no patty pats, okay? Because what happens when we pat, we're breaking up the electromagnetic currents that are very subtle. And that energy is the one that's actually healing your cell core. That energy is the one that's actually changing the molecular energy forms so that you're holding more frequencies of high vibration in your atoms, in your atoms, in your cells, in everything. So when you're hugging someone, you're actually getting healed. When you're patting the body like that as you're hugging, you're, you're, you're dispersing the energy. So it's not making a full, complete hold on the other person's energy field. So, and then, you know, and try to at least hug 40 people or 20 people or 10 people a day and want, you're going to be in, in bliss. It's, it's phenomenal. But, you know, as that, as a spiritual tool, um, is really important, I think, so. I love that. And, and how about gazing? So are you talking about when you, like, uh, squint your eyes? Or when but you're how, gazing what? into someone else's eyes. I feel like that's a very powerful yeah, experience as well. Sense. Yeah. So I'm not, I, I do more of um, focus uh, love intention. So, like, I'll do it for you right now. So I'm, so I'm looking at your eyes, right? Okay. <laughs> you see, you feel that, that energy? That delicious. Yes. Yes. Isn't it lovely? It's like a nice pie. So. <laughs> 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 so <laughs> the thing is with that with that what i'm doing is I, I have this so i have this thing on instagram it's called it's it's called eyes of love underscore eight and i'm going around the world taking pictures of 
people looking to the camera and what they're saying in their head is all the beautiful things they want to happen to you and all the beautiful things that you are and all the truth because the biggest reason why human beings suffer is they lie to themselves oh, they yeah. tell them things that go against your system and here's the funny thing your soul your core self is pure love it knows the truth so every time you lie to yourself it went, it's like a virus it starts pushing the virus away and then what we do as people is we reconstruct it again so we're like oh it's going away let's say it again Oh, let's go away. Let's pull someone in and create another situation to make it to make it real because we want to be right. We want to be right. And we want to be we want to we want to hold this um, this pride of our righteousness over ourselves by even drinking poison every day when we know it's poison. And so the thing is, is that the the core, the energy core of recognizing this energy inside of us and who we are is the fundamental part of our evolution. It's the part that realizes, oh, wait a second. Um, I don't need to drink poison. Oh, wait a second. Um, I don't need to respond and react to that person because if I do, that means I'm saying it to myself. So the truth comes to when you're saying it, if I say what I was just saying to you right now in my head, I said, um, I love you so much. I'm so happy you're on the planet. You're such an amazing being. You do so much for everyone. You're always thinking about people all the time. I love your, your playful self. I love how you're so spirited. I want you to continue to, to shine your light as bright as you want. All of that was going on in my head, and all of that is being sent to you. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've, I've been getting that message as well, that with this program, and actually, so I was getting the message anyway, and then somebody, another light worker told me, she said, Carrie, it's like when you get on the show and you laugh, what people don't realize is that they're kind of getting giggle goo, like all over them. It's like they're, <laughs> they're getting like happiness, like sprinkled all over them. <laughs> and so like, that's part of my, that's part of my gift is that I'm bringing that joy, you know, into people's mm -hmm. lives without even realizing I'm doing it. <laughs> Although now I'm aware of it, but that well, was something have, interesting. You have very energy too. Yes. I do. <laughs> well, all of this has been really fascinating. Let's see what other questions do I have. So, um, so it's oh yes. So it seems to me, you know, there's been some times in my life, and I I wonder if other people feel the same way, where I was haven't been sure about a decision that I needed to make. I, I've I've been blocked on it, and I've used my intuitive methods, you know, my pendulum and things like this, my tarot cards, my muscle testing, and and still, I felt very like, mm, I don't know what to do. And, and so the one that came up for me recently to give you some context was I'm, I'm studying with some uh, teachers uh, called the Power Path. And in September, we were going to do a journey to the Chaco Canyon in the four corners of the U.S. And we were working with the Spirit of the West, which is all about releasing that does, which does not serve you and, um, you know, embracing some expansion into new possibilities. And I was in very great resistance and I had lots and lots of ideas in my head. You know, I had just gotten back from Peru and Asangate and I thought, well, I just don't need to go on this trip because I'm good. <laughs> and I could not figure out the right thing to do. I've already paid for this, you know, and, and it was so confusing. So I got through it somehow and I ended up on the trip and it was probably one of the more profound releases for me of what, what the Carol call hucha you know, of heavy energy that I've had to date. It was so intense and so profound. And I'm so grateful that I went. And on reflection afterwards, it was really this distrust that was what was getting in the way for me. And that was making it difficult for me to access the truth of my intuition and my knowing. So when people get in spots like that, what are your recommendations? Um, first, let me just ask the council members um, what is actually getting in the way of that energy for you really quick, just, and then I'll give the answer as well from the council members as well. Uh, council members, um, what, is, what was getting in the way for her in that experience? In that experience, she has taken in a lot of energy and parts of her being wanted to be able to take time for her to be able to digest what she has already taken in and organize it in a way that works for the new system that she is building. 
the part of her being did not want to feel forced into something instead of to feel a joyful experience of it even though she went into the experience that actually supported her, the thing that was blocking her intuition and limiting her was her inability to be honest about what she really needed in that moment. Ah, interesting. Fascinating, okay. So what, um, how can she increase her intuition, council members? In order for her to increase her intuition, she has to let go of that part of her being that feels like she's making it up. She's holding on to old programs that comes from her mother with this idea that she feels that she is not really operating from her truth. There's still a part of her being that is in distrust. She has to embrace that part of her being and allow it to enter into the part of herself that knows, accepts this path completely and fully and accepts her intuition and her psychic ability as well as her inner and outer awareness. This will then allow her to have full access to her intuition and be able to have more clarity in questions and answers that she needs for her soldier. Right on. A hundred percent. Yes. It's a journey for me. It's a journey for me with that element. That's a very deep rooted one. It's, you know, from one years old. So it's change the language. Deep rooted means it's gonna. You're, you're like what, a submarine. Are we? Should we put a suit on right now, my love? We're about to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making up more stories. We're gonna go down the beanstalk. See, now this is what we do in the spiritual community, though. We tell stories like this. We say, "Ooh, mm -hmm. that is from childhood, and that can't be fixed." And okay, so maybe this is what a part of the problem we're experiencing is the idea that it can't just be poofed. Of course it can. It and can the be other thing, poof. Absolutely, because nothing is deep. There is no deep. There is no cavern, no cavern that you're going to go into with a submarine, climb down some beanstalk that's like 20,000 feet high. You know, people are like, one guy said to me, it's so deep in there. I'm like, really? Because to me, it looks like it's ready to come out. You know, it's like sitting there being like, I want to go to the light. I want to go to the light. Get me out of here. Right? <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> so why like are we making up these stories that it's so deep why why are we doing this to ourselves then we make up stories that it's deep and that it's difficult and that the, it's you know, oh my god i have to go on this hard journey because we have this this disconnect from understanding how things actually manifest themselves and it comes through the idea of acceptance everything in life is about acceptance uh a woman can go you know to uh to the mountains um, and then go to India and then do a whole juice cleanse and then do this yoga thing and then all of a sudden take a, a workshop and now she sees herself as spiritual because she did all of those things and that's what her mind says, okay, well, if you do those things, you're spiritual now, right? But another person could be sitting on the toilet, drop the toilet paper and stand, sit, sit up straight and go, oh my God, and get all the downloads completely that is necessary because they know that they're able to, to, to accept this information that's coming in. You see, we put restrictions on ourselves. We don't believe we're worthy enough to be healed. We, you know, I was in a wheelchair for a year and a half and the doctors told me I was never going to walk again. I was like, thank you for that information. And as, as according to your world and what you see, I can see how you see that. However, I'm Shaman Durek, and I did a whole other plan coming through. You see, because the thing is, is that it, the, the reason why people get sick in hospitals and why they stay sick in hospitals is because you have all these family members coming in and crying like babies over their bed, which means they're focusing on their illness, which means they believe it. And you know, in, in, in tribes, if someone gets sick in a tribe, I would take that person away from the tribe because the shaman never stays in the tribe. They always stay outside of the tribe like hermits and I'd take them outside, bring them to my place. And then every family member that wants to see them, I would ask them one specific question. What do you believe? What do you see with this person? And if they go, oh my God, please, I hope they live. You're not going in that to go see them. If they say that person is strong, they're powerful, they, they have the ability to, 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 to completely clear any energies, you know, this is only temporary, you go in the room, you see? And so 
when we say it's deep, it's difficult, it's all of these things, it's because we believe that we have to go on some kind of journey, some kind of like long, deep submarine ride all the way down to the caverns of Cary to be able to find and pull out whatever this deep, dark thing is down in the caverns, you know, like with Jack Cousteau going down there with all explore, you know, explore to us, exploration mission, you know, and if that's what you feel you need to do, Carrie, you know, all the angels, all the guides, all the spirits, including the creator itself will say, we love you, go for it. Like if that's what you need to accept your, to accept that this is what it takes to get it out, by all means, <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> you know, I have moments, I've had moments of awareness of this. Where almost like my true self just peeks out for a second and goes, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> you know, like this is so silly. You know, like, I've just had those moments where that self pokes out and is like, oh, I'm so powerful. Okay, let me go back and pretend I'm not for a while. You know, and it's just like this back and forth. Yeah, but that's all because of the technology that we were put into from the time we were children. You know, we were put into an institution that, uh, that uh, basically trained the part of our brain to deduct and subtract and calculate and so forth, but it didn't acknowledge and it, it, it didn't acknowledge the understanding of the, how we operate as seeing ourselves as valued. You see, so what it did was it, make us, it made us compare ourselves. We had to take tasks. And if we didn't pass, we didn't think we were smart enough. And if we didn't get the teachers, you know, become the, the teacher's, uh, you know, pet, we're not this, we're not that. Like, if we're not part of the cool group or the, you know, the kids, it was all this programming that we have to do something in order to be loved. We have to uh, create something in order to see value. We have to um, be something. So people live in this world. I mean, if you look at like people, red carpet events and this, everyone wants a reward. They all, and that's the reason why we're not moving any forward in our evolution. We're on a, a cyclical wheel as, 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 um, you know, as, as it is said in the, in the, the, the sphere of relativity, we're stuck on a wheel because we're stuck on a wheel of suffering because we keep believing that our whole definition is the definition of how great I am without referencing anything through love. There's no discernment in love. It's not like, oh yeah, we figured out how to build an atomic bomb. Oh, wait a second. Wait, wait, wait a second. Let's clarify it with love. And we would go, oh, this is going to hurt and destroy life. We shouldn't do that. Even if we're smart enough to create it, let's dismantle it. You know, oh, we found a chemical that's going to prolong food. Uh, is it going to hurt people? Yes, but it's going to make food last longer and it's going to make more money. No, we're not going to hurt people because we, we value life. You see, we don't identify things to the core of love. So we, we identify things by being amazing. We identify things by what we can buy, what we have, so we can show how, once again, amazing and wonderful we are, so we can feel love. Because we think that if we're amazing, we're wonderful, and we did something good in the world, we get love. And this is a domestication. This in shamanism, we call this the breakdown of the spirit and the rebuilding of technology that is incorrect for nature and incorrect for the animals and incorrect for the planet. And we're the only species on the planet that operates um, against, uh, uh, against nature. You know, I always tell people, if you want to really in, um, in, uh, bring harmony into your life and you want to understand it more, you have to realize that this construction of technology is false. Your val you are valuable already. You don't need to seek. You don't owe anyone anything. No one owes you anything. I know people say, well, my mom should have did this for me. No, she didn't have to do anything for you. You know, all she had to do was bring you through her vessel. You're that you should be honorable already about, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, women will say to me, oh, you know, I can't believe um, I'm not, it's not fair in America and all these different things. I mean, go to the bathroom, you know, pull your pants down, take a look below and see that there's no mutilation. So you are better off in such a great way. Be grateful for the things that we have. And so a lot of times people are, oh, I'm grateful for my smoothie. I'm grateful for my kids on a roll. We have to be grateful for the things that we really need to understand about our evolution, you know? And the thing is, and we, 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 we move ourselves from those things and we make things more difficult for ourselves. Mm. And there's no need for it. There's no need for it. Like I said, I said to a group of people in Iceland, I was giving a lecture and I said, you want to know why nature's in, in, in a bad situation? And they were thinking I was going to come up with some kind of like really cool thing. And they were like, what? I said, because we don't respect women. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah. That's the reason why. And they're like, oh, we thought you were gonna say something different. I go, oh, no, 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 that's the formula. 
Because in shamanism, it's always the most simplest. It's if you make it more convoluted, the shamans were like, okay, got it. That's why a lot of shamans, when you know, when they give you plant medicine, whatever, they they're there, they do the, the songs with you, they do it, but then they move away from you because they know that people in the Western world have stories and they're like drama that they don't need to have. So work out your drama through the plant medicine, work out your drama if you need to, but these things are wasting your energy, you know, mm -hmm. and we're too powerful to waste energy. You know, if someone says, uh, you're not smart enough, you're not good enough. I'd be like, um, sorry, you feel that way, you know, because I know who I am. Thank you. Because I'm clarified by love. I'm clarified by love. Every time I want to make something, if I'm like, oh, I want to come up with this new thing. I want to make it. The first thing I ask myself is I clarify it with love. Is this, can, can, um, can, does this pass through the sphere of love? No, then it's not going to be created. Mm. But we don't need to make it hard, darling. Yeah. It's easy. It's easy. Mm. Say it with me. Say it's it with me. easy. I love how amazing it is that things just fall in my lap. I love how amazing it is that things just fall in my lap. I love how when I walk into a room, I light up the room and people are getting healed by me instantly. I love how when I walk into a room, I light up the room and people are getting healed by me instantly. I love right now how so much healing energy is running through my body. I love right now how so much healing energy is running through my body. I love how amazing it is that I'm so intelligent and I can figure out anything. I love how amazing it is that I'm so intelligent and I can figure out anything. I love how amazing it is to have all these creative powers and the most amazing intuition. I love how amazing it is to have all these creative powers and the most amazing intuition. Yes. Yes. And I love how this message is helping everybody who's watching. I love um, how amazing it was that all the people who watched this show had life transformations, all the clouds lifted, things became more clear for them. That was the most amazing thing ever. I mean, how amazing was that? It was so amazing how people reported back to us that they received so much healing from this broadcast. Yes. It changed their lives significantly. I know. And when I heard you told me about it, that was the most amazing thing i was so excited about it it's incredible how the power of intention and love can change people's lives yes. and wake them up to who they really are already yes. yes and pierce the veil of all the illusions that are no longer needed Just and it's so easy to pierce that veil all right it's so yeah. easy it's easy right. it's easy and the cool thing about it it's fun it is fun. Yes, it's very fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I get my guys are like, be careful what stories you're going to make up now. <laughs> I can hear them. And you know, that you're not going to make up no stories because those voices that you just heard would never say, be careful, you're going to make up stories because guides don't operate from a place of a linear perspective. They operate from a quantum and they only choose the quantum of you that is most powerful, dynamic, most creative being. Like they see you in your highest light. Mm. So that was you saying ah. that to yourself. You see, guides don't mm. speak. They don't get angry with you. They don't... Uh, uh, they don't press you. They always come from a place of love and assistance. And, 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 and beings from the lower realms or coming from the lower realms, their job is to keep you stuck so they can keep needing your light so they can survive. So they will say things to you and keep reminding you of things in the past, keep reminding you of things that happened, keep reminding you of these things. So you need their services, such as you might need control. You might need to be able to, um, you know, to, to protect yourself through, through them. So they will give you a form of protection, but it would be based on control. It would be based on shutting you down, all these different things. And to them, they're serving you. They're serving the creator. They're serving you. At the same time, they're feeding off of your energy. Because you're the creator, you don't need control. Because con control comes from fear, 
right? Worry comes from fear. You worry for someone, you're worried about something, you're bringing negative energies from the lower realms and the density is coming up through your shoes and all of a sudden you're using that. The thing you're worrying about, if you worry, like I told this woman today, that if you're worrying about a friend, it's basically like you going to that friend's house and graffitiing their house and throwing all kinds of teeping with toilet paper all in the house because that's what worry is. When you're in the light, you don't worry. You believe in people's power and you know that they can do anything. So talk a little bit, just say a few more words about discernment with messages. Okay. So let's put it to you this way. Okay. Discernment through message is very simple. It's one of the, actually one of the things that I learned as when I was about 13 years old from my elders is the, um, the qualification of love versus the qualification of fear, right? So anything that you hear that isn't loving, okay, is coming from the lower realms, right? And you don't get upset with them. You don't be like, get out of my head, no, because you're... <laughs> around to get them the lower around it doesn't work like that right as martin luther king said you can't fight darkness with dark you have to use light and in love love is the only transmitter that actually takes the darkness and turns it to its original form and in hinduism they believe that it's the poison you drink you turn it into medicine right and and and, and when we shamans have the same thing and so the core energy of of what you're saying is basically that if the, 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 the voice you hear or the person talking to you is not coming from love, right? Because you know, see how I will make corrections and stuff? It's because I love you. I, but I'm not going to come and say, oh my God, I can't believe you're doing that. That's, because judge, that's, that's judging. Me. Yeah, that's, that's a judging, judging energy. And if, mm -hmm. I, if I come at you and attack you, that's because I have poison inside of me that I want to share with you because I don't feel like anyone sees the poison and the pain that I'm going through. So I want to share my poison with you or share my story with you, right? And so we, as, 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 as beings, we should have learned this as kids, but because the system built the wrong technology, we have to actually now uh, rebuild the technology, restructure, and, and renew. So we are at a precipice right now where we have to really use discernment through love. So let's say, for instance, you hear a voice in your head that says, um, well, you're only going to do it again. You simply say, um, I understand that I've been listening to you, and that's why you have access to um, my consciousness. Because understand your brain, you, what goes on in your brain isn't, isn't just yours. It's connect, your brain is a conductor of energy. And this conductor conducts all types of energy patterns from color signals, the pulses, ranges, sit tones, um, binary patterns. I mean, the list goes on. Your brain, when you get a thought, like an idea about something to, to create, 20,000 other people just got that as well. Okay, it's not just just to you. It comes to all it gets all sent in by the teachers and the masters and all the higher beings sending in different types of um, transmissions and whoever picks up on it, whoever acts on it gets to reap the rewards from it. Right. But when you hear a negative thought, that's not you. And a lot of times what happens is, and I work with a lot of psychotherapists and psychologists, and I always have to remind them and help them to go further in the psychology because the, you know, our system doesn't want psychology to evolve. That's why it keeps them stuck on the same, using the same teachings from people who were back in, I don't know, like, you know, I don't know where were they were, 1600s or something, 1900s, way far back, you know? And like there's the, the, the new psychology is understanding that your mind is a conductor. So when you hear something negative in your head, you have two things you can do. You can either one, say, um, no, thank you, and just cut it off and say, no, thank you. That's cute. How funny. <laughs> and then just cut it off right? <laughs> because you know the like truth. That one. <laughs> right. Or if you really want to get down to it, you can simply talk back to it. You can simply say, I know you're not me. So where are you from and what's your origin? Okay. It will respond back to you. It'll say, no, I'm you. It'll try to convince you because you see spirits in the underworld know that you don't know how your brain works. And they know that all they have to do is send a transmission to you. You'll, and as you accept it, now they have access to your consciousness. You see, our consciousness is more bigger than in our brain. It's, out, it's all around us. It's, an, it's, it's all around our entire being. It's cremating through everything around us. So to get access to it, all, they, all you have to do is accept their transmission. 
So if you hear something negative and then you go, oh my God, I can't believe I'm talking to myself like that. That's not you talking to yourself. That's what I teach people. You are pure love and that never changes. What's, what's talking to you is these other beings and they're hoping you don't know that it's them talking to you. Mm -hmm. And so what you simply do is like, people are like, oh, but I'm afraid, I'm afraid. No, there's no fear, no fear. You don't need fear. That's why when you were a kid, they came into your room when you were a kid because they wanted to, the shadow beings wanted to invoke fear in you as a kid, hide under your bed, the boogeyman hiding in your closet. They were really doing that because they wanted to, peer, uh, to, to pierce fear into your consciousness. So, and because they knew your parents were already programmed that you weren't going to get the full support that you needed. You were going to shut yourself off from seeing spirits. You're going to shut yourself off from your intuition. You're going to shut yourself off from your psychic powers because you're afraid you're going to see something scary, right? It's not mm -hmm. about scary. The unknown is pretty awesome, okay? So, you know, I was the kid who was in the closet and they said, I felt something in the closet and I got up and I said, what are you doing in my closet? You get out of there, you, right? <laughs> I love that. It's such a different spin on everything. Right? I mean, because yeah. we have to stop being afraid, yes. you know, because that's how you get in. So when you have that voice, you can say, hey, look, you need to go to the light and I'm here to help you. I love you. you need, it's time for you to go to the light. You don't need to be in the darkness anymore sending me transmissions. Are you ready to go home? And all of a sudden, they're going to talk to you. They might say, I'm scared. What if God doesn't love me? Or they might say, um... I, I like it here. And you can say, why do you like it there? Because you're afraid. Because darkness is afraid of the light because it can't forgive itself. So it keeps creating fear. It's like a kid who does something bad and it wants to see and it knows that you're going to get mad. And so it keeps doing it until it pushes you away. It's hoping that you're going to abandon it. So that's why darkness does what it does. Its job is to generate enough fear in society that you'll never, ever go into darkness with your light. It wants to stay so separate from you. And this is what Lord Siddhartha was talking about when, um, about duality. It wants to stay so separate from you because it knows that you still have judgment and you're going to judge it. You're going to lock it up. You're going to condemn it. You're going to punish it. You're going to kill it. You're going to destroy it. You're going to put it in a top secret box, but you're not going to want to deal with it. Whoops. And this... <laughs> we're, we're a little early there. <laughs> oh, your next show, your next show. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Can you see us? I can see you. Okay. I'm great. early. I said okay. to be on early, so I, I'm on early. <laughs> Hi. So meet Shaman Durek. This is uh, Julie Hannon, one of my teachers from the Four Winds. Hello. So we were just wrapping up our call, and uh, we'll just go ahead and I'll just, I'm going to edit the video, and so we'll we'll add this in. So cool. we were we were just finishing up our conversation. And we were talking about the voices in your head. Uh, ah. And how do you know, like, where those voices are coming from and whether those voices are the ones you need to be listening to? <laughs> and Shama Dirk was telling us some funny stories about the voices that get in your head. <laughs> I'd love to hear her, his voices. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is what I was saying, so going back to what I was saying, kind of close that up, is that the darkness itself in shamanism, the way, we, the way my elders taught me is that the darkness itself is not for us to be afraid of. We, have to, we are set to go into the darkness and give it love and transform it back into its original form. And so that's why when we're kids, the, the shadow beings, which um, start, you know, do all those things to shut you because it makes you scared, it shuts you down. The reason why it's shutting you down is because the darkness is afraid of the love. It's afraid of the light. It doesn't think it, it deserves to be in the light. So what it does is like a kid who keeps acting bad to push you away, that darkness wants to really go home. It wants to go home into the light. But we created such a dualistic understanding on earth that we, what we do to the unknown, what we do to darkness is we condemn it and we lock it up and we turn our backs on it and we say it's bad and we say it's evil and we say all these things. Instead of embracing and loving and bringing the light channels from our hearts into the darkness and say, come home, brothers and sisters, we love you. Come home. It's time. You don't have to be away from the light anymore. And this is the core energy. So when, when, we, when we hear voices in our head, we have to realize if it's coming in a negative way, that's not us. We are pure love. Those voices are coming in from transmissions from other beings. And what, what my elders taught me from Africa is that 
we have to interface with them or we, if we don't want to interface with them, you simply say, no, thank you, but I know the truth of who I am and that's love. So I know you're not me. So a lot of times what happens is people actually think that those voices are them and then they react to them and they, and they start acting out whatever the voice is telling them, you know, and we have to get to a place that every single thing we create, we hear, we speak, and we operate from is put through the lens of love. Mm. And if we put that through the lens of love, oh, can I just tell you where we are going to be? That's Women cool. are going to be put in their right place as leaders on the planet. The nature is going to be a part of our buildings, about our homes. We're not going to just see concrete everywhere. We're actually going to see grass and trees and more greenery because we need that for sustenance for our body. We're going to operate in the way that the intelligent messages that were left by our elders, which is inside of our heart, the codes of all the ancestors of all the tribes before us, all the way back to Lumuria, the Mu people, the Anunnaki's, all of the messages that are here inside of us are waiting for us to decode and say, okay, we need to restructure civilization and come into an understanding that it's a global family. It's a unity mm -hmm. of, our, of our love for one another. I love that. I, oh, Julie. Oh, you're going uh -oh. <laughs> When you hear this, when you watch this one, oh my goodness. Oh, I love Shaman Derek. You're and awesome. I love you. Aw. And Such I love you too. Mwah. Nice to meet you. <clears throat> Meeting you, you mean nice to be uh, reconnected. Nice to be reconnected, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to wrap up our call with Shaman Durek. And I want to just say um, thank you so much for this wonderful call. It's been beautiful. Uh, so much wisdom shared. And I'm just going to give you like a minute to tell us about, you know, anything you want to share about your programs are going on or uh, things you want people to know. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so one of the things is that uh, right now I'm in Istanbul, Turkey, because I do a lot of, I do a lot of um, work here for women because my whole purpose in life is to, to take uh, shamanism into the mainstream place where people who are like Wall Street execs, lawyers and doctors and whatever can actually understand shamanism from its core. Um, and also women being put back, um, given their power to be the leaders that they were, they were born to be. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm in Istanbul, but one of the things that's coming up and I'm trying to get to it actually on my thing because I had to, because when I got disconnected from the, the bad internet here in Turkey, uh, the dysfunctional internet that we have here. Let me just pull it up really quick. I'm doing, um, here it is, there we go. So I'm doing on February 16th, uh, Mike Dooley, it's called Mindful Magic. And I'm gonna be speaking and it's gonna be um, a teleconference as well that's gonna be going on, which is gonna be wonderful. And um, the other thing too is if you get a chance, you can follow me on Instagram at Shaman Dirk. You can also check out my worldwide campaign called Eyes of Love underscore eight. Send me a video of you looking into the camera, um, saying beautiful things to people in, um, in your head and just for, for like 25 seconds, 30 seconds, you know, send it to me on Eyes of Love underscore eight. And building that campaign more and more you can go in there and actually get filled up with love if you go in there and look and see all the amazing people from around the world giving you love from all these different countries and um and the other thing is you can go to shamandurek.com check out what i'm up to where i'm at what country i'm in join my workshops learn more about shamanism and 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 understanding what shamanism is and how you can make that a lifestyle choice and most importantly, more than anything, is to know and celebrate you every single day because you are a gift and we all love you and all the spirits love you and the trees love you and the flowers love you. So don't ever think for one second that you're not loved because even when you're sitting by the window and the sun is shining on you, the sun is giving you love. So you are wrapped in love all the way around. I love that. Thank you so much, Shaman Derek. I really appreciate this interview. It's been a pleasure. I know we'll connect again. And I want to send everybody love. So I do it with kisses. So here they come. Mm. Kisses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sweetie. You have Bye, a good baby. one. Thank Bye, you. honey. Thank you, baby. Bye. Bye.